Hello, my name is Mrs. Tessa Rose Mathmoody. Today we're going to talk about below ground plant tissues. Let's get started. Although we usually think about roots being underground, plant stems and leaves can also modify their growth to be vital organs underneath the ground. The four that we're, examples that we're going to go through are rhizomes, corms, bulbs, and tubers. Not all plants have these underground stem tissues, but for the plants that do have them, they're incredibly important for their survival and reproduction, and they can also be important food for us as well. The first thing that we'll go over is a rhizome. A rhizome is a horizontal underground plant stem that's capable of producing the shoot and root system of a new plant. The example that we'll go over is of a bamboo plant. This is a video that I took while in Brazil last summer. Here is a bamboo forest. Bamboo is known for overtaking an area. It can overtake and sometimes be detrimental to the forest environment because of these rhizomes. Rhizomes also can start adventitious roots, which you see here. These rhizomes allow the spread of the bamboo plant. This can overtake the forest and sometimes harm the environment since only bamboo can grow if it's really thick. That's an area where bamboo is starting. Bamboo is very helpful for making things such as homes, but at the same time can starve out native vegetation if it gets out of hand. Bamboo also works great as a fence for around homes, but since it can be an invasive species, Sometimes this is not recommended. The next one we'll go over is a tuber. You're all familiar with a tuber because you've probably eaten potatoes. Potatoes are an example of a tuber, which is a swollen area of a stem that's underground. We know it's a stem because it has buds. Roots do not have buds. These are called eyes on a potato. Each individual eye or bud is capable of producing a new potato plant. This is a way that potatoes can reproduce asexually, which do not include a flower. The potato forms because of a rhizome, and then where the tuber is going to form is a swollen area. Potatoes are important for plants for storing nutrients for the next season. We harvest these for eating, and it's a valuable food source for many humans around the world. The next one we'll go over is a bulb. You're all familiar with a bulb if you've ever eaten or cut open an onion. If you've cut open an onion, you know that there's layers. These layers are actually modified leaves used to form a storage organ. Bulbs are usually large, globe-shaped, with many overlapping fleshy leaves. These are the leaves in the bulb. It acts as a food reservoir, and it enables the plant to lie dormant during a time of unfavorable weather, such as drought or a cold area. Once the favorable temperatures or enough moisture returns, the plant can continue growing. Many different bulbs are common garden plants that are very beautiful. Since the bulb is such a large storage organ, these types of plants that are bulbs can start flowering early on in the season. They don't have to store up nutrients through photosynthesis to flower in the summer like other flowers. They have a stored nutrients so that right when the weather gets warm, they can shoot up and produce a flower. Most of our Easter or spring flowers are bulbs because of this amazing storage capacity. The next one is corn. The difference between a corn and a bulb is that bulbs have layers, just like an onion. Remember, an onion is an example of a bulb, as are daffodils and tulips. But a corm are undifferentiated, uniform um, flesh that contains no rings when cut apart. It's sometimes called a solid bulb. Examples are taro and gladiolus. Let's review what we've covered for plant parts so far. In the first lecture, we covered leaves and stems. In this lecture, we covered underground stems, including rhizomes, tubers, bulbs, and corms. 
Next time we're going to talk about roots and how they're important for anchoring the plant, water and nutrient absorption from the soil, and storage, include and nutrient transport. Until next time, I hope that you have a great day, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment or email me. Bye-bye.